Okay, bite sized chunks, we've done the arpeggio lick. Yeah. And when we get down to the end of that lick, we're ready for the arpeggio lick. So. Here it comes. As I've said many more, many times, not many more times, many times, none more look. So in the middle of this absolute shred-tastic wailing, <coughs> you know, pretty intricate solo, you can play just this beautiful wide, right? <coughs> so, we've got the end of the descending bit. Here it comes. That's uh, D and B flat. In the words of my pal Gary, down the fret. This is like C sharp and A. In the words of my friend Gary, down the fret. A and C, or C and A if you want to put it the other way around, just like the show, right? Now, <clears throat> you may notice that sounds fairly discordant, in fact, pretty out of key. But he's playing it. The notes go by so fast that a chromatic run sounds great. You know, if you do it smoothly enough, it sounds great. So um, you get down to the bottom notes and play this. Now the place I like to play it, and where I think it sounds most like the record is here. I don't know why, but that. <clears throat> to me sounds more like Rosanna, but I think he played it here because he, he was up here, so um, You could if you want go Do four fifths apart But I think that would be pretty hard, so I played it three frets apart the first part, it was four frets apart So the way it is on the record of him playing, I think, is here The way I like to play it Right then the line that's just beautiful. But whenever you play it, that's maybe <clears throat> the most difficult bit in the whole thing, but I'm sure you can do it.